We have two breeds of milking sheep, we have llamas and we have goats, as well as the poultry. We make a bit of cider. In the fridge we have a Romano that I've made in 2013. It's just about ready to cut, it's fully mature. I'm Peter Allen, better known as Pete the Permi. With my wife Sylvia here, we have developed a permaculture farm, which is about conscious design using the animals, the plants, the buildings and the community to build a better, more efficient system that uses less energy. Give me a kiss. Good girl. For Silver and I, our permaculture is more than just growing our own food. Here it's about community and also respect for the land. These cypress trees were dead 30 years ago. We cut the tops off and we milled the timber to use for structures around the farm and then we've turned the stumps into these. I'm quite happy with what they look like and I always did like a man with a beard. I have to admit in a past life I worked for a large supermarket chain for 25 years. But since then we've been growing our food here on six hectares, growing certified organic, certified biodynamic. You won't find any food tastes better. This farm was established in 1893. It was a mixed farm, so they grew orchard trees, but they also grew a lot of cut flowers. You can still see the lilies down in the paddocks down the back of the property. We grow a lot of our own vegetables here, including tomatoes. This vine here has yielded over 80 kilos so far this year, and I think that's due to the paving here creating a beautiful microclimate, extending the life of the plant. These heritage tomato varieties might not be the right ones to grow for a supermarket to put in cold storage for a month, but they're wonderful taste and flavour and beautiful colours. They're so easy to grow in something like a no-dig bed system. In the hills here, we get between one and five snows every year for the last 20 years that I've been here. But we can grow avocados. This is one of 14 varieties we grow here. This one is Fuerte and this year it's yielded over 350 avocados so far. My favourite though to grow in the hills would, or in Melbourne would be Huss. It's very good at pollinating with others and we get a good crop once you have more than one variety. This is a fig tree found in my mother's garden in Montrose. It was an office seedling which I've named after my mum so it's now Nancy's Black Genoa. In organics and biodynamics, composting is everything. Here we make compost to feed the soil, or the soil feeds the trees and the amount of food that'll come out here will feed half an acre of fruit trees for an entire year. We have a thousand varieties of fruit trees here. We've saved from around the country and we're preserving them here on this property for the future, which makes this a nationally significant collection. In this netted enclosure, we have 84 varieties of plums. We have nine varieties of quinces and a couple of varieties of apricot. We built these netted enclosures so that we can keep out the birds, the parrots, the rabbits and the foxes. We also have the possum problem and also now we're getting bats in the local area. In this garden bed, I've planted 42 varieties of apple that I grafted last winter. These are there to complete my collection. I think 500 apples is enough for anybody. This here is one of my favourite varieties. This one's called Blenheim Orange. It has three months of premium use. It's what we call a dual purpose apple. We can use it for cooking in the first month. The second month we'll eat the apple and then for the third month we can go back to cooking or it's perfect for drying. It cooks down to a froth, tastes like it's been spiced with cinnamon and nutmeg. Here we've obviously hit this tree with the tractor. So we've caused injury to the bark and that's given opportunity to the woolly aphid here to infest this tree. If we leave it, it's not going to be good for the tree. So what we'll do is we'll use our biodynamic tree paste. It contains cow poo, diatomaceous earth, some lime, and then we use clay to make it stick. That will smother them out, but it'll also help heal the tree at the same time.
So another one of my favourite apples is this one called Opalescent. It's from 1899 from the USA. This apple won the Petty's Antique Apple Festival twice with consumer votes. It's a really good eating apple, but it will never end up in the supermarket due to its short shelf life. But it's a fantastic growing apple at home. Here we have the apples on wires and we grow them in an espalier method called an oblique cordon, which is on an angle here, which promotes more sideways growth. Because what we're actually after in this orchard is the sticks that we can use in our nursery for grafting material. It also means we can fit more apples in the same space and we've also planted them all alphabetically. The enclosure here is managed by five geese. They mow this grass down so that Sylvia, where she used to have to mow 13 times a year, now only mows it once because she wants to. With pest management, we use guinea fowl. They sleep in the trees, but they just eat protein, so they're eating the bugs for us. This is a crab apple, which is normally used for making crab apple jelly, but in this case, I like to use it in my cider to give it a bit more bite so it supplies acid and tannin to the cider. We normally sell the apples and pears off our collection at the farmer's market on the weekends, but when we have windfalls on the ground that aren't suitable for sales, we can use these to make cider or we can turn them into juice. So apples, pears, and we'll even add nashies to our batch. Crush the pears whole, but we need to break up the apples. That goes into the press, then we press out the juice. All we have to do now is add this juice to our fermenter, add the yeast, and in nine months' time, we'll have real cider to drink. Cheers. <laughs>